This episode of Bouts Talking Bouts is brought to you by Bare Knuckle Betting Shark. Winning parlays. If you're looking for them in BKFC, you got to be checking out BK Bet Shark. Here's the thing. $50 buys, you get a personalized bet slip. It's based on your own budget. You can be flexible. It is what works for you. And this guy's got the receipts. You can check out all the winning tickets. You can peep them, and you can do so at Bare Knuckle Betting Shark. Check him out on Instagram and get with it. Got them personalized betting slips going on, $50 buys. All right, on this episode of Bare Knuckle Radio, very excited to be talking to an individual who competes at BKFC 52, a very prominent fight going down in South Carolina on October the 20th. And contending for that Bantamweight Championship, we've got Reggie Barnett Jr. defending his gold, knuckling up, and towing the line against Keith Richardson. And great having Keith on the show today. How's everything going today, man? You having a solid one so far? Doing great, yeah. You know, uh, can't complain. Um, yeah, just working hard and living life. Yeah, and it just seems like just such a role at this point. It seems like you really, you know, called your shot after the last one there, getting the knockout of the night at BKFC 48, and then indicating you wanted the belt and everything like that. Like, when did this officially get confirmed for you as the next fight, though? Um. Yeah, I know that. Like. Um, yeah. Like. Um, uh, like that, that uh, last fight was supposed to have some tight implications and stuff like that. So, uh, like, I, you know, I definitely knew uh, it was a good time to call my shot. Um, took about a month or so, I think, for everything to get kind of finalized and, you know, negotiations to finally uh, get finished. But, you know, I'm, I'm happy with the result. And I mean, just very interesting. So I was reading an article that came out a bit after your last fight, and you were like, oh, yeah, in a perfect world, like my BKFC run is pretty much going as it's been going. Like, just how, you know, much you've been fighting, like, just the run you've been on, readying for, you know, a title fight now. It's kind of interesting because you were saying you weren't sure it was going to be a long term thing initially. Like, was there a distinct point, like an epiphany moment almost, where you did realize, like, hey, this could, you know, be a long term thing? Um,. Yeah, you know, the the Scoggins fight, you know, um, definitely had a uh, a big impact on um on my decision. Just uh, like all the love I received after that fight, you know, um, yeah, yeah, because yeah, it was probably one of the highlight fights in my career. Um, like yeah, just the uh, the promotional push I, I received, you know, um, and it just. Uh, you know, especially going against a high level striker, you know, that you know, I, uh, that was, you know, at one point top fifteen in the UFC. Um so like, you know, I felt good, felt comfortable. Um, yeah, I always always knew like nobody could really break me in a fight. Like that fight uh definitely um you know, cemented that. Um yeah, so I wasn't uh so I felt like really comfortable after that fight and then yeah, you know, everything since has gone extremely well and i didn't even like know this context was you know part of the situation but i'd seen a recent interview where you were talking about how you lost your father less than two weeks before that scoggins fight and i mean honestly as someone who similar boat has you know lost his father like i can't even imagine doing something of that magnitude like that magnitude of a task and the effort never mind coming out victorious so i mean Just really, really incredible stuff. I don't really have a question in all of that. I just found that, you know, pretty jaw-dropping and awe-inspiring. Like, just, yeah, wild stuff. Just really, really incredible situation there. Just what you were able to overcome and, you know, do there. Yeah, thank you. Um, You know, I uh, I didn't really talk about it much, much, uh, like, you know, leading into the fight. Like, I think, uh, yeah, like, I think it, I think BKFC wasn't even sure if I was actually going to fight, like, because I been open and honest with them about what I had going on um but yeah like you know that la- that last uh, interview um like you know like that was the first time like I, I think I've really you know completely uh opened up about you know exactly what I was going through at that point um yeah you know, it was one of those situations though um where it was kind of the perfect fight at the perfect time because it was such a challenge um and it was something that, like, I got to pour my whole heart and soul into that fight, um, and just empty all, like, empty everything out, empty all the emotions that I was feeling. Um, yeah, it was just one of the. It was 
it was what I needed at the time. Cause like, you know, the whole camp I was going, like, you know, I was going through a lot, like, you know, stuff, just going from the gym to my, uh, to the hospital. And then, uh, when we moved my father into, uh, hospice care, like, you know, I was staying in my, um, you know, my parents' house every night, just taking care of my father, like after, and just going from there to the gym, there to the gym, uh, like, you know, cut. But it gave me something to focus on, like so, it, like uh, so. I didn't really have to process everything all at once. Yeah, like, and my dad was, you know, supportive of it the whole time. Um, you know, he he's been there for almost all of my fights. He's been there for almost all of my like my, my wrestling matches in high school. Um, you know, he's just been such a big part of my life that you know. Um, and like, you know, he knows, like, he's the one that taught me that type of work ethic. So he, uh, you know, he was real supportive of the whole time. Like, you know, he's, he's like, he's like, like, do the fight, son. He's like, you know, it's what you do. It's what you, what you were meant to do. Like, you know, he was always super proud of me and super proud of my career. I mean, yeah, justifiably so, man, because I was seeing an anecdote where you were talking about how he was there at your, you know, pro boxing debut and just, you know, like the pain he was in at the time. But also within that post, I thought this was very inspirational, just like a, you know, I guess a great perspective and obviously a terrible situation. But just you were almost like looking at it as like a thing that like really like ignited that hunger more than ever before. Because I think you were saying like some people have been asking you like, oh, what's different this year? Like, it seems like you're putting it together like almost more than ever before. And it seemed like just that really like ignited something in you and everything like that. Yeah. Like, you know, um, yeah, you know, I, like even in a- MMA before I made the move to BKFC, I, I've been on a really good run for, for the past couple of years, but you know, uh, this last year, like, you know, I've upped it even more. And like, you know, my dad's been a big part of that. Uh, you know, he, like, it's what, like, you know, it's what he wanted me to do. Um, so I'm doing it for him and it just, yeah, it sent me into overdrive, sent, sent my focus to that next level. Yeah, for sure. Like, you know, he's been helping out, you know, even though he's not here. Yeah, no, I mean, it definitely, you know, comes across in a lot of different regards. And you did mention the wealth of MMA experience, like seeing 33 at least professional MMA fights per topology at the very least like I'm curious because obviously the grappling aspects are taken out no kicks etc but you know you know what transferable elements from your MMA game were you able to I guess add to what you do as a BKFC fighter um you know the the non-traditional striking um yeah like the fact that I switch a lot um like you know and I do it very fluidly uh that like you know that was a big part like you know i think it uh, throws off a lot of um guys that have more of a traditional boxing base um the clinch work but, but one of the biggest things i think is just the uh just mma you've got to have uh i think i think the work ethic's got to be a little bit high, higher just because you're trying to do like five sports at once um so when you get to simplify it like you know the fight camps are a lot easier on my body because i don't have to wrestle and grapple as much uh during camp, like, you know, that really, like, starts, like, you know, that, that's what really, like, beats up your body and everything, so, like, you know, having, getting to, getting to take that out of my fight camp, you know, I go in there feeling, like, you know, I go into the, the fights feeling a lot fresher, not as, uh, banged up, not as bruised, so, like, you know, now the, the fights themselves, you know, they can get, uh, a little, a little tougher, a little uglier, and a little nastier, but I think um, I think that MMA work ethic, you know, that that grind is uh, is something that really really helps uh, in BKFC. Yeah, I mean, well said. I would think also that the I guess like active clinch and infighting dynamics of BKFC would kind of work out with the prior MMA experience too. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. We don't mind getting uh, getting in tight, getting nasty, working that dirty boxing. Um, you know uh, that that strength, that push, that pull. Uh, 
definitely is a, a big advantage. Um, yeah, I think that's why you see a lot of MMA guys doing doing well in bare knuckle. Yeah, and, uh, and it's kind of funny, like you know, to, like it's kind of funny to me, like um, yeah, my whole MMA career, I was more known as the uh, submission guy. You know, and here I am getting ready to fight for the uh, BKFC world title. I mean, that is interesting. There is something about that, though. Like, I feel like I've seen a few, like, very, like, jujitsu centric MMA guys do, you know, quite well in bare knuckle. Like, I remember Jim Allers, like, in the earlier stages of the company was, you know, kind of similar. Like, most of his MMA wins were, like, submission oriented, but just the bare knuckle boxing game just really, he took to it like a duck to water, it seemed like. So, yeah, interesting. I wonder what that is. Like, I wonder if that's also tied into the maybe, like, active clinch dynamic, because there is, like, a pseudo-grappling component to BKFC, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, definitely think it helps. Plus, I just think uh, I just think my whole MMA career, my uh, striking was underrated. <laughs> yeah, well, it must be satisfying to see it really come through so evidently in this kind of medium, but very curious to get some insights into the work for this one, because I was seeing you're the owner of Modern Warrior, MMA, so I imagine a lot of great work going on there, but thought it was cool to see you at United Fit getting in that work with BKFC flyweight champ John Dodson ahead of your own title fight. So can you talk about some of the recent preparations at all? Uh, yeah, like, you know, um, that was, uh, that's always great, great experience. You know, I love John, like, uh, me and, me and him have been, uh, been cool for, for a while. Um, you know, it's funny, like, uh, right before he um, he made the move to BKFC, and then eventually I made the move to BKFC. We we're actually supposed to fight MMA uh, for the uh, ex MMA belt, but then um, like you know, we wind up getting signed uh, by BKFC. But <clears throat> like he's he's one of my favorite people, uh, like in the fight community. Like him and his family, they're they're, they're like the nicest people on the planet. Um, so it was great, great to actually get the. Uh, train together, especially somebody that moves so well, so dynamic, so explosive. Like, we had a real fun time training with each other. Um, you yeah, know, it was a great experience. Um, as far as, as far as like, you know, this camp, though, I'm um, not changing up a ton of, like, you know, what we, what we do here at Modern Warrior. Um, you know, we've got a great program and we've got great people around. Um, but, you know, Look, uh, luckily, I'm blessed to have like you know even more people coming in to get get work. You know, I've got a, uh, you know, uh, the the people that we have here are amazing. And then like, yeah, you know, I'm getting uh, you know, fight uh, other fighters from the roster and from the area coming in. You know, getting sparring, getting work. Guys like Tony Soto, Trevor Logan, um, Jeremy Holloway, and then like you know, I've got uh, like guys that I work with uh, constantly. Um, I, you know, I've got a uh, Brian Battle. Uh, you know, I've got Taylor Starling. You know, and then I've got all my uh, all the fighters that I train. That you know, we're getting plenty of good work. Guys like DT, Ruben, uh, Isaac. You know, Pedro. I've got like just just got a great group of people around me. So, you know, I'm just trying to. I, I think that that's one thing that a lot of people. Um, like when they get that big fight, they start they they think they've got to do too much and get like and add all this other stuff in, and they want to like burning themselves out and she, like you know changing what made them great in the first place, you know what got them there. So I'm just kind of kind of uh, not trying to t- change it up a ton, just amping it up a little bit and uh, you know getting ready for uh, you know for that tough tough fight that's going to get me that strap. And it is interesting because this fight seems like a very different stylistic dynamic. I mean, the last two fights, obviously, there's, like, the component of you just, like, implementing your game plan, you know, very well, for sure. But, I mean, you talked about the first fight kind of being more oriented to, like, just this wild, like, awe-inspiring kind of war, almost. But then, like, back-to-back first-round finishes thereafter. Like, do you feel like this fight will, I guess, allow you to, like show more of, like, that, like, technical aspect, like, some of the technical aspects of the bare-knuckle game and the fight IQ specific to this sport, just considering the profile of your opponent and how technical he is? Yeah, like, I, I definitely don't expect a uh, easy path to victory. Um, yeah, that's, 
that's why, like, you know, I'm not somebody that uh, calls guys out, out like, often or ever. But, you know, the reason why I men- mentioned, you know, Reggie by na- name was, was because, one, I respect him and I want to, I, like, I want to fight the best. I want to be the best. I want the belt. You know, he had that target on his back when he, when he, when he got the strap. Yeah, so it's not not personal from for me, but I want yeah, I want the best Reggie Barnett that there is. Like, because I want to know, like you know, when we we throw down, and if I get that belt around my waist, I want to know I earned it one hundred percent. Um, but yeah, I definitely think with his uh, technical expertise, yeah, you know, it's gonna be a, uh, you know, it's 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 gonna be it's gonna be a uh, very very technical fight, but uh. Yeah, it's also uh, I'm also going to force the issue and uh, you know test his heart and see uh, how bad he wants to keep it. Yeah, I think um, the re- like part of the reason why the uh, fight with me and Scoggins got yeah became like was such a war was because we were both very evenly matched technically. Like at, you know even though it was a war, I, at no point did I really think that like the fight was a uh, uh, was like an ugly sloppy brawl like. Yeah. We both switched stances really well. We both matched each other's movement. So, like, you know, when you're matching each other technically, you don't really have, like, you don't really have an option, but, you know, you're both going to land shots. You're both going to eat. You know, you're both going to eat shit and have to push, uh, push through. Like, you know, and that's, I think that's what made that fight, like, you know, even more special it was because it was a technical fight the whole time. Like, you know, we're both switching, finding our angles and stuff like that. But, like, you know, but we were we we're on we we're on such a even playing field that like you know we couldn't really nobody could really pull away that easily so we had to just kind of dog it out. Yeah, I mean that is well said, and I definitely you know get what you're saying in that sense, and that did kind of seem to be the impression I got from at least one of the articles I was seeing when you were talking about this fight. Like you can interface with Barnett on a technical level, but maybe like it ultimately behooves you to like you know, I think the operative wording was bring the dog out of him, like maybe really like try to pressure cook him. And I also saw towards the end of the article, I mean, this is a sentiment to all your fights. Like you're saying, you're always looking to finish it, but it seems like that very much is extending into this one. Just, yeah, try to bring the dog out in him, pressure him and try to end it inside the distance. That seems to be the, I guess, plan from what I'm seeing from some of the articles I've been checking out. Yeah, absolutely. I can't, you know, um, not looking to, uh, not looking to turn it into a point sparring match. Uh, you know, I want to I want to push him, pressure him, beat on him, and you know, try to try to make him not want to get up. Yeah, you know, everybody, everybody that uh, everybody that I've fought thus far is at, at hit the can hit the canvas at least once. Yeah, I mean the track record is there, and I mean. I'm curious because, like, we've been talking about the experience across multiple combat sports, and you've been a practicing martial artist in a lot of disciplines for a while now. Like, how much of a capstone achievement would this one be if you get your ideal outcome? You know, obviously winning the title would be tremendously important, but facing one of the more, you know, higher-ranked, like, pound-for-pound fighters in the company, like, how much of a capstone achievement would this be for your overall combat sports career? Uh, you know, it would be the biggest moment to date. Yeah, I'm never gonna never gonna put a cap on it, but it would definitely be the biggest moment of my career. Um, yeah, thus far, now it, it would mean a ton, especially with everything that I've gone through this year. It'll, uh, you know, it'll be one of the biggest moments of my life, and it'll be uh, it'll definitely be the biggest moment of my career thus far. Yeah, well, I mean, such a an incredible story heading into this. Very inspirational, I think, and. Just, I mean, a great matchup on paper, like even just looking at the localized kind of components of the fight, definitely an exciting one. But I appreciate the time and insights and everything, Keith. But, you know, echoing the sentiment from earlier, definitely want to be mindful of your time and schedule too. So is there maybe like a final parting thought you'd want to add as we're kind of wrapping things up here, man? Um, nothing too major, you know, um, October 20th, BKFC 52, you know, I get to fight in my, uh, my home state is South Carolina. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to really putting a uh, putting a show and going going to war for uh, this uh, home state crowd. So make sure you guys uh, buy tickets, come out. 
can't make it, get the app and watch the fight. And, uh, you know, I'm just uh, looking forward to putting on a show. Yeah, there's a lot going on with BKFC 52 on October 20th and definitely excited for all of that. And yeah, just this Barnett Jr. fight, just to reiterate a great title fight and very much one that, you know, a lot of people are stoked for. I think that's a sentiment the bare knuckle community shares overall. But again, thanks for coming on the show and giving great insights, man. Looking forward to peeping this fight when it goes down. But until then, you have a good rest of your day there, Keith. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, a pleasure to talk to you. This episode of Bouts Talking Bouts is brought to you by Bare Knuckle Betting Shark. Winning parlays, if you're looking for them in BKFC, you got to be checking out BK Bet Shark. Here's the thing, $50 buys, you get a personalized bet slip. It's based on your own budget. You can be flexible. It is what works for you. And this guy's got the receipts. You can check out all the winning tickets. You can peep them, and you can do so at Bare Knuckle Betting Shark. Check him out on Instagram and get with it. Got them personalized betting slips going on, $50 buys.